In order to count in binary, we apply the exact same rules for counting in the decimal numeral system, or as it's also called, base 10. Now, even though we all know how to count in base 10, we typically do it intuitively without actively thinking about the rules that govern what we're doing. The moment you become conscious of those rules, you'll also be able to count in binary without any issue whatsoever. So in order to learn something new, it can help to first take a look at something old, but from a slightly different angle. These are the 10 digits that we use to represent any number in base 10. When we count, we start with the digit that represents the smallest value, which is 0, and we make our way to the one that represents the highest, which is 9. You can imagine these numbers as having an infinite amount of invisible zeros to their left, which will make things easier to grasp as we move on. When we get to 9, we can no longer progress by using single digits, so in order to continue, we reset the rightmost column to 0, and every time we reset a column, we increase the one to its left by an increment of 1. Since we said that we have an infinite amount of invisible zeros on the left, this column is going to be increased to 1, and that's how we get the number 10. We continue to increase the rightmost column by an increment of 1. In this case, since we have a 0 here, the following rightmost digit will be a 1, and every time we're able to increase a column, the remaining columns, the ones to its left, simply get carried down. So that means we just carry down the 1, we won't worry about the zeros anymore because they're invisible, and that's how we get to 11. By applying the same rules, we get to 12, make our way through the teens, all the way up to 19, and now, since we can no longer increase the rightmost column, we reset it to 0 and raise the 1 to its left by an increment of 1, and that's how we get to 20. Fast forward to 97, 98, 99, here we can no longer increase the rightmost column, so we reset it to 0. We also cannot increase this one, so we reset it to 0 as well. But hey, we do have an invisible 0 right here, so we increase this column to 1, and that's how we get to 100. Moving forward, we increase the rightmost column by 1, and since we're able to do that, everything to the left gets carried down, so we get to 101, 102, 103, and so on and so forth. The same rules apply when counting in binary, only here we just have two digits to work with, so 0 and 1. Just like we did earlier, we start with the digit that represents the smallest value, which is 0, and we make our way to the one that represents the highest, which in this case is 1. Now, this time we've run out of digits much sooner, so in order to continue, we reset the rightmost column to the lowest possible value, which is 0, and increase the 1 to its left by an increment of 1. Just like earlier, we can imagine an infinite amount of invisible zeros to the left of these numbers, which is the reason we can increase this column to 1, and that's how we get the number 1, 0. Moving forward, we do have the possibility to increase the rightmost column by an increment of 1. Since we can do that, all the columns to its left simply get carried down, and as a result, we end up with the number 1, 1. Let's continue applying the same rules. Here we cannot increase the rightmost column, so we reset it to 0. We also cannot increase the next column, so we reset it to 0 as well. But since the next column has an invisible 0, we'll increase it to 1, and in doing so, end up with the number 1, 0, 0. Okay, now it's your turn. Pause the video for however long you need, and try to use what you've just learned in order to write out the next four binary numbers and I'll give you the answers when you come back. Okay, so the rightmost column can be increased, which means that we carry down the rest, and that brings us to the number 101. Here we have to reset the rightmost column, but we can increase the next one, which means that we carry down this one, and that brings us to 110. Using the same rules, now we can increase the rightmost column and carry down the rest, which equates to 1, 1, 1. And finally, we reset the rightmost column, as well as the next one, as well as the next, increase an invisible 0 to 1, and we end up with 1, 0, 0, 0. Here's what these binary numbers equate to in decimal. Now that's all fine and dandy, but what if someone straight up asked you to write out the binary number for, I don't know, 69? What are you going to do? Start from zero and work your way up? 
Well, not on my watch. I'm gonna show you how you can convert any decimal number to binary and vice versa in no time. First, here's how we can convert decimal to binary. We'll first write out a simple table with some place values moving from the right to the left. We start off with two to the power of zero, which is one, then two to the power of one, which is two, two to the power of two, which is four, two to the power of three, which is eight, two to the power of four, which is 16, and for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll only go up to two to the power of eight, which equates to 256, because we won't be converting any numbers that are higher than that anyway. You probably noticed a pattern here. We started with one on the far left side, and continued adding numbers to the left simply by multiplying by two. And that's really all you need to do when writing this table. The only reason I wrote out this part is to illustrate the fact that place values in the binary system increase by a factor of two. But let's convert the number 69 to binary. We start by looking at the greatest place value, which in this configuration is 256. We ask ourselves, can we subtract 256 from 69? Since the answer is no, we put a zero in that column. We then move on to the next place value and ask ourselves the same question. Since 128 cannot be subtracted from 69, we put a zero in that column as well. We move on to the next. Since 64 can be subtracted from 69, we put a one in that column, and we subtract 64 from 69, which leaves us with five. At this point, we continue the process with this number. Moving on to the next place value, we ask ourselves, can we subtract 32 from five? Since we cannot, we put a zero in that column. We also cannot subtract 16 from five, so we put a zero in that column as well. Same thing for the next place value. Since eight cannot be subtracted from five, we put a zero in the column. Since we can subtract four from five, we will add a one in this column and subtract four from five, which leaves us with one. We continue the process with this number. We cannot subtract two from one, so we'll add a zero there. And finally, since we can subtract one from one, we add a one in the final column, subtract one from one over here, which brings us to zero and to the completion of our sequence. And now if we look at our table, we will see that the binary counterpart to the number 69 is one zero 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 one zero one. In this particular configuration, listing these two zeros would also be correct. However, we technically don't need anything that is to the left of the leftmost one, because for all intents and purposes, we might as well have an infinite amount of zeros there. Let's try a different number. For example, 216. We cannot subtract 256 from 216, so this is going to be a zero. We can, however, subtract 128 from 216, so we put a one here, do the subtraction, and that leaves us with 88. Can we subtract 64 from 88? We certainly can, so we put a one here, do the subtraction, and that leaves us with 24. Can we subtract 32 from 24? No, we cannot, so we put a zero here and move on. We can subtract 16 from 24, so we put a one here, do the subtraction, and that leaves us with eight. Now we can subtract eight from eight, so we put a one here, do the subtraction, and that brings us to zero. Since none of the remaining values can be subtracted from zero, we put a zero in all of the remaining columns, which brings us to the completion of our sequence. And if we look at our table, we will see that 216 corresponds to 1101000 in binary. Here's one that you'll probably be able to solve literally in seconds. Pause the video and apply what you've just learned in order to convert the number 256 to binary. If this example was laughably easy to you, that means this video was a success. And you're absolutely right. 256 most certainly can be subtracted from 256, so we put a one in the first column, and since this subtraction brought us to zero, we can no longer subtract the values from the remaining columns, which means that everything else is going to have a zero. Therefore, we arrive at the conclusion that the binary counterpart to 256 is equal to one, zero, 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 zero. 
We can easily check these results by adding up the values of the columns that have a 1. So we know that this one is correct because only the first column has a 1, which means that we have nothing to add to 256. Here we can say 0 plus 128 plus 64 plus 0 plus 16 plus 8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. That equals 216, so this is correct. And here we can go 0 plus 0 plus 64 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1, which is equal to 69, so this is correct as well. Notice anything interesting? By checking the results of our decimal to binary conversions, we have effectively learned how to convert binary to decimal as well. Pause the video and see if you can use the same logic to convert this binary number to decimal, and I'll give you the result when you come back. Okay, so hopefully you were able to deduce that the first column has a 1, which means that we will add that column's value. The next one has a 0, so we will add a 0 or nothing. The next one also has a 0, so we will add a 0 or nothing. The next one also has a 0, so same thing, we add a 0 or nothing. The next one has a 1, so we add that column's value. The next one has a 0, so that's going to be plus 0 or nothing. The next one has a 1, so we add its value. The next one also has a 1, so we add its value as well. And finally, the last one has a 0, so we add a 0 or nothing at all. When we add all this up, we arrive at 278, which is the correct decimal counterpart to our arbitrary binary number. Good job.